بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابته الأخيار ما تعاقب الليل والنهار يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone we praise Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek His forgiveness and His protection from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our deeds. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with guidance, none can misguide. And whomever Allah punishes with misguidance, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no true God except Allah who alone without any partners. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ahadu Samad. He is the one, the absolute unique. And he is a summit, the one that all creation rely upon, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day, in every moment, he takes care and sustains the affairs of his creation. Every day he is taking care of the affairs of his creation. Everything we witness, the heart that beats in our chest, the sun that shines bright, the energy that we feel, the life around us, the smiles that we see, the breath that we take, it's all sustained by Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is all a manifestation of His rahmah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly encompassing us. وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً And He envelops you in His rahmah and His ni'am and His blessings and in favors inwardly and externally. And so the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are abundant. And that which we recognize and that which we're able to acknowledge is only but a fraction. How many of Allah's blessings go unnoticed? Every moment, countless, in the trillions if we were to enumerate them by what we know by science. And beyond those numbers, these blessings we are immersed in them at all moments. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains us. He sustains the disbeliever who disobeys Him and gives him the chance to repent and return to Him. He sustains the sinner and gives him a chance to repent and continues to favor them. And this is all by His rahmah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustaining all of His creation. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His rahmah has guided his righteous servants and bestowed iman upon them. He has given them the knowledge of knowing him, the absolute truth, al-jameel subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beautiful. He's a nur, the light. The one who knows him has nur in their heart. Their life is illuminated. Their hearts are illuminated. Their faces are illuminated. Why? Because of the nur from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sent our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a manifestation of that nur. He is nurullah, he is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a physical form. And so whoever adheres to the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam is on a path of light and guidance. They're on a path of mercy and blessings. 
And so may abundant peace and blessings be upon our beloved Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the seal of the prophets, the imam of the prophets and messengers, the master of the children of Adam, the chosen one, alayhi, alayhi afdalu salati wa atamu tasneem. Dear brothers and sisters, I remind myself and yourself to have taqwa of Allah, be God conscious and God fearing in all your circumstances. Alhamdulillah, we have completed the month of Ramadan and we have completed the month of fasting. After this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may glorify Allah for what He has guided you to and so that you may become grateful. This is the objective or the end of Ramadan. And what comes after Ramadan is supposed to be a sense of gratitude, a sense of shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sense of magnifying Allah and humbling our egos, removing the selfish interest of our, of our desires and pride and only focusing on the pleasure of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so from the lessons of Ramadan, and the takeaways we're supposed to take away from Ramadan is a sense of gratitude for this Islam and specifically for the month of Ramadan. One hadith that captures the great virtue of this month is the story of Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrates that two men came, two brothers, two men came and they took their, sh they, they, and they became, they took their shahada with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the same time. And one of them was أكثر اجتهادا من الآخر One of them was more devoted than the other. Until he went out in jihad fi sabilillah and he died as a martyr in jihad fi sabilillah. And then his companion who became Muslim with him lived a year after him. And after a year had passed, his companion also died. These two men had embraced Islam at the same time. Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he saw a dream that as if he was at the gates of Jannah. He says a person came forth from the gates of Jannah and the two men that had became, embraced Islam together were both standing at the gates of Jannah. And he says permission was granted to the second man to enter Jannah first. The second man was not as devoted as the first. He did not die as a martyr in battle. The first man was a greater devoted servant, and he had shahada. But the, first, the second man was granted permission to enter Jannah first. And then the first man, after some time had passed, the first man was granted the permission to enter Jannah. And then Talha was told, your time has not come yet. And so he woke up the, in the day, in the morning, and he went out and he told people what the dream that he had saw. And so people were amazed. How can a man who had lesser deeds and not die as a shaheed enter Jannah before a man who was more devoted and died as a martyr? And so the Prophet wasallam caught word of this, of this dream that Sayyidina Talha had and how shocked or surprised the companions of Allah Ta'ala anhum were by this, by this event or by this dream. And the Prophet wasallam said, why are you, why are you surprised? He said, did he not live a year more than him? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, yes he did. He said, did he not reach the month of Ramadan and fast the month of Ramadan? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, yes he did. And he said, did he not pray this many, sajd this many prayers and make this many sajdas during that year? They said, yes he did. And he said, the difference between them is the distance between the heaven and the earth. For one year of fasting, the Prophet ﷺ said he fasted one additional Ramadan. He prayed one additional year. He said that those deeds he had, he had performed were so great in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and multiplied in such a way that it is the, it, the distance of the two men between the two men is that the distance of the heaven to the earth in just because of the deed of one year. And this is a reflection of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He says, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمُرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ He says, the best of you, those who, have law, who live long and have righteous deeds. 
And so this hadith captures the blessing of the month of Ramadan upon us. That this month has been bestowed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah wants to multiply our deeds for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect us from the whispers and influence of the shayateen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to grant us an opportunity that which, in which we can earn deeds that are more valuable than a thousand months of our regular, the regular time of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to emancipate in every night of Ramadan servants, countless servants who were destined for hellfire. These people were destined for hellfire, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed Ramadan so these people may be emancipated. So they may be given a chance to rectify themselves and rectify their, their condition with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if a person has been blessed to fast Ramadan, they should leave and we are all here today and so alhamdulillah we have all witnessed Ramadan. We have all fulfilled the command of Allah. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ Whoever among you witnesses the month, let him fast. We have all completed that. We should all be experiencing a sense of gratitude to Allah for His favor upon us. And my dear brothers and sisters, we should never become impressed with ourselves and associate our deeds to our own self. If it wasn't for Allah's favor upon us, we would have never known Allah, nor would we have known His Messenger, nor would we have prayed. Allah says, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا If it wasn't for the favor of Allah and His mercy, no single one of you would have been purified. No single one of you would have been purified. If it wasn't that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed mercy upon us, and He put us in a place where we know Him, where we are grateful to Him, where we receive our, His commands, where we obey His Messenger, none of us would have been able to fast the month of Ramadan. And so the believer after Ramadan should feel a sense of gratitude to his Lord. And how is that gratitude expressed? It's expressed by being consistent in the obedience of his Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, shukur is not just a statement of the tongue. It isn't just to say alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah and then be done. Shukur isn't just a momentary, a, moment, a feeling of a moment. Shukur is something you live by. I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Do shukur, O family of Dawood. Amal. And so to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it means that one is obedient to him uh, as, he, as, he goes out, as he goes through life. And the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he demonstrated this in the famous story where he prayed the entire night until his feet became swollen. What did he say, alayhi salatu wasalam, after he was question, why do you pray when you have been forgiven for your sins? He says, alayhi salatu wasalam, afala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a grateful, a grateful servant? And so post Ramadan, the servant should go back to his Lord and should be steadfast on his deen and obey his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and not take the end of Ramadan as a, as, 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 a, as a let loose or go free and do as you will, Ramadan is over, go back to your norms and habits. No. It should be followed with obedience and with fasting and, with, and of the most important a'mal that a person should follow Ramadan with is the fasting of Shawwal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَهُ سِتَّ مِنْ شَوَّالِ فَكَأَنَّمَا صَامَ الدَّهَرِ Whoever fasts Ramadan and then follows it with six days of Shawwal, it is if he has fasted the entire year. And so this fast is a multiplication of reward and it is a means of giving gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the blessing of fasting. We ask Allah to assist us and make us among the grateful, assist us with his worship and remembrance. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma sami'atum astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد 
وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وأتبعوا السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن Also among the, the qualities that the pious predecessors had after the completion of Ramadan is this fear of hope and this, this feeling of hope and fear. And so there's hope in the reward of Allah. There's hope in the thawab of Allah that we are, we believe in la ilaha illallah. And we fasted for the sake of Allah. And we stood in prayers for the sake of Allah. And we read the Quran for the sake of Allah. And we refrain from haram for the sake of Allah. We hope from Allah's generosity that He will reward us for His deeds. That is a quality that a believer must have. No matter who they are, no matter what their state is, to have to lose hope in to lose hope in Allah is only something that the Quran says only the disbelievers do. Only disbelievers lose hope in God. A believer can never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because why? One who knows Allah is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim and Al-Kareem and Al-Latif and Al-Wadud. He's the most merciful and the most compassionate and the most generous and the most loving and the most gentle. Knows that, he, that you can never lose hope in one of such great compassion and generosity and love and mercy and forgiveness for his servant subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the servant must also have fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Those who give what they give and when they give, they give it while their hearts are trembling from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidatna Aisha, she thought, رضي الله تعالى عنها, she said, Ya Rasulullah, is this the person that drinks khamr and is this the person that steals? And is this the person that fornicates? The Prophet ﷺ said, no. She thought that one that would do good deed while fearing Allah would be only the sinful. She thought if a person is sinful and they do a good deed, then they must be scared that Allah will not accept their good deed. Why? Because they're sinners. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, it's not those people. The, these ayat are referring to people that fast and that pray and that give charity. And they do all of this while fearing that Allah will not accept their deeds. Sayyidina Ali anhu, he says, Kunu ashaddu ihtimaman bil qabooli min ihtimamikum bil amal. He says, be more concerned with the acceptance of your deeds than you are concerned with your, deed, your, your deeds itself. The acceptance of the deed is what matters. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyidina Abu Dhabda, they say, if I knew Allah had accepted one of my prayers, would be, that would be more beloved to me than the entire world and everything in it. What guarantee do I have that my deeds have been accepted? What guarantee do I have that I have not done something for my a'mal to be rejected? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Indeed, Allah only accepts from the muttaqin. This heart should, this ayah should bring fear to the heart of every believer. If Allah only accepts from the muttaqin, where am I from the muttaqin? Am I sincere in all my motives? And this is what the, the taqwa that's being referred to here is referring to the taqwa of the heart of sincerity. Am I sincere? What are the ulterior motives a person might have? A person might wonder, can intention be so difficult? Can sincerity be so difficult? Yes, it can. And it is actually the most difficult deed. The most difficult deed a person can, in, can, can perform is ikhlasul qalb, is sincerity in the heart. That is the most difficult deed. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الشِّرْكِ الْأَصْغَرِ The thing I fear the most upon you is minor shirk, riya. To do your deed for an ulterior, ulterior motive and not knowing so. It's hidden. It's subtle. You don't notice it. You don't even feel it or consciously process it. But it's there in the background. 
And if a person doesn't regularly hold themselves accountable, they can continue performing years and years of deeds with ulterior motives and they don't even know it. And come the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, all their a'mal are rejected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana aghna shurakau an shirk. I am the most independent of partners from shirk. I don't take any type of partnership. No association can be made to me. Not in the tawheed of, of oneness of la ilaha illallah and not even in the smallest of deeds. Allah does not accept partnership. And so, what are some of the ulterior motives a person might have? If this deed is so difficult, what are the, some of the traps of the shaitan or the traps of the nafs that a person might fall into? One, they might fall into a, a, an, an impression or a type of arrogance, thinking that their deeds was their doing, and as, uh, associating it to themselves and not realizing that it is Allah's guidance upon you. It is Allah's blessing upon you. It is Allah's favor upon you to guide you in the first place, to teach you in the first place, to make His worship easy for you, to grant you the deen, to sustain your heart, to illuminate your heart regularly so you don't fall to the desires of yourself when countless other people have fallen to the desires of themselves. When countless other people who are more intelligent than us have fallen to the desires of themselves. It is not because we're more intelligent. It isn't because we're, we're superior because of our ethnicity or culture or background. It is Allah's favor upon every single one who put us in a place where we repent to Him. So if a person falls into this quality of being impressed with themselves, I fasted, I did this, I gave charity. They're already feeling impressed. I, comp I accomplished such an accomplishment. It leads to ujub. It leads to an impression of with oneself which can nullify a person's deed. Another deed, that, another way, an ulterior motive that could enter a person's heart is the impression or, or, or that to do something habitually. To do something because of habit. It's customary. I fast, my family fasts. My community fasts. I do this because it's part of my annual routine. My community is fasting. Or I just do this regularly. It's a habit for myself. But there isn't this awareness of Allah. There isn't an ikhlas. And how often, dear brothers and sisters, do we enter salah and we just say Allahu Akbar without paying one, one mind to the words we've said? How many days have we risen to fast without paying one moment to our intention and why we're fasting? Who knows what our motives truly were? Can we be so sure that our motives were sincerely only for Allah's sake? Every day I fasted, I, only did, I did it consciously for Allah, not habitually, not customarily, not because of impression with myself or some other benefit. I did it sincerely for Allah, seeking His reward. No person, no person can claim such a thing. And so the believer must have a sense of fear must have a sense of worry. Are my deeds accepted? Am I accepted? Am I worthy of Allah's reward and Allah's mercy? And of course, none of us are, are worthy of Allah's reward according to our deeds. But it is hope in His mercy that we have, that by hope in Him, Allah accepts our deeds. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the balance here. Is the balance here is that a person has this sense of hope in Allah Ta'ala and has a sense of fear of their own shortcomings and their own flaws. One of the, and and we, conclude, we conclude with some practical deeds that help with the acceptance of a'mal. Among them is dua. Dua is of the most important deeds a person can do to have their deeds accepted. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, after he built the Kaaba, what did he say? Every Muslim should have this dua memorized. Every Muslim should be reciting this dua regularly. Every week, every day, every year. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ This is the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim and I'm pretty sure we've heard it in the qunut every night of Ramadan. We heard this dua being recited by our imams. What does it mean? 
Our Lord, accept from us. You are the all-hearing and all-knowing. And accept our repentance. Guide us to repentance for our sins because you are the one who loves, to, who loves repentance and you are the most merciful. This was the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. And so memorize this dua, my dear brothers and sisters, and repeat it often. Repeat it often for Ramadan and repeat it often for every other deed that, that we do in our days, in our weeks, in our years. Another deed that helps with the acceptance of, uh, of, 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 the acceptance of deeds is istighfar. Seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to hajj, ثُمَّ أَفِيضُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَاضَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ Go to the area where the people are all going to and seek the forgiveness of Allah. Our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he completed salah, immediately he would say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. The malaika would say, Subhanaka rabbana ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Glory be to you, our Lord, we have not worshipped you as you deserve. So the, one of the most important a'mal the believer has is seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what has passed, for the shortcomings, for the things that have been done knowingly and unknowingly. And so we ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala by His mercy and generosity to accept our deeds, to make us among those who have prospered with the rewards of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast after Ramadan, to make us among those who are God-fearing in all their circumstances. We ask Allah to allow us to continue fasting regularly, to allow us to continue praying regularly, to make His worship and remembrance easy and beloved to us. We ask Allah to forgive our sins, our parents, our teachers, and all of the Muslimin. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik Allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم واغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين